Good morning, brothers and sisters. We're gathered uh, here today to celebrate the life of our brother, Brother Henry Lee Clark. And we certainly thank God for uh, his life. Thank God for the many lives he touched for what he meant while he yet lived. Um, we will not have a final review, but we thank God for the family, those that have had to travel uh, great distances to be here. Uh, for each one of you that are gathered here uh, this morning. We will not have a final review, so if there are those who would like to review the remains, uh, my brother will take a moment or two and allow you to do that. Then our uh, deacons will come, and then we will allow, uh, ask our directors to come. Thank God for our nurses and our ushers and our deacons. Amen. Tell them, hold the God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition. No, on earth on move can stand build your hope on things eternal hold to God's unchanging hand everybody ought to hold to his hand God's unchanging hand hold to his hand God's unchanging hand Build your hopes on things God's on changing hand. I like this last verse. When your journey is completed, if to God you have been true, fair and bright your home in glory. Yo, in rapture the soul will view. Come on, help me one last time. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. You ought to hold to his hand, God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal and just hold to God's unchanging hand. Come on, let's say amen. Amen. Thank God again for the life of Brother Henry Clark. I ain't going to start talking about him now. He was a unique fella. Amen. Different in his own way. I'll have more to say about that a little bit later, but we certainly are thankful and grateful uh, to God for allowing him to pass our way. Uh, once again, I want to thank uh, uh, 
I always get it mixed up, Fountain, Jordan, Shepherd uh, Funeral Home. I always want to say Jordan Fountain, but Fountain, Jordan, Shepherd Funeral Home for the services that they have rendered. Thank God uh, to them, and I want to thank all of our uh, staff, our musicians that's here, our technical, uh, Dr. McManus that's here, to our deacons, ushers, and all um, who are here, our nurses that are here to share today, to the family and to each one of you. Um, listen, we know that this is a, a tough time when you have to say goodbye to someone that you love, uh, but the fact of the matter is none of us came here to stay permanently. Amen. And the best thing that we can do is to prepare. We don't know the day or the hour when the Lord will call us home. The best thing we can do is to live prepared. Uh, and Brother Clark had demonstrated that by his faithfulness. We're going to, uh, let me acknowledge, I want to thank God for Dr. Gordon that's here, Dr. Charles Gordon, pastor of the Covenant Chapel Baptist Church. I see Reverend Woody Collins here. Are there any other ministers in the, in the building, any other ministers or pastors? Thank God for them, and thank God for each one of you. We're going to follow the program uh, as printed. We're going to have a selection by uh, Mrs. Isabel Bernard. We'll have the scripture, Old Testament and New Testament, and the prayer by Pastor Marlon Winfrey. And we'll have another selection by Miss Isabel Bernard following the prayer in that order. Let's say amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning to Reverend Dr. Backus, Reverend Gordon, Kathleen, and this very fine Clark family, members of friendship and friends. I've known Henry Clark, or Clark as everyone's called him, for a really long time. As I knew him, he was a man of few words, yet to me he possessed a quiet dignity. He was a bit of a fixture here around uh, friendship, and I will truly miss him. Rest in peace, Clark. Why should I feel discouraged? And why should the shadows Come. And why should my heart be lonely and long for heaven and home when Jesus is my portion, my constant friend is he. His eyes on the sparrow, and I know is me his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me and I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free me and I 
sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free Third Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. He lets me rest in the green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid, for you are close beside me. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of mine enemies. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The entire 23rd number of Psalms. Gospel John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know, and ye know the way. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. Six verses from the 14th uh, chapter of St. John. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word for the edification of our souls. Eternal God, our Father, how we thank you this morning for who you are. We thank you, God, for what you are. We thank you, God, for what you're doing, even in this moment. God, our hearts are heavy, but God, you are our strength. And so, God, we say thank you. God, we're leaning on you for the family, with the family, for the church. God, we are leaning and depending on you, asking God that uh, you would give us the strength that we need to make it through this hour. But, Lord, in the days to come, we ask that you will continue to be with us when memories are flowing and phone calls are few. God, we ask that you would continue to send peace and strength and comfort to the family. And so, God, we ask right now your blessings upon the remainder of this worship. God, that it, you will get the glory in this hour, in this moment, and through your word that's going to come forth. God bless us now. We thank you for Brother Clark. Thank you for what he means to us. God, we thank you for all of the conversations and communications that we had with him. Good, the funny, and maybe the not so good. But God, all of it, we thank you for. We thank you for his life, and we thank you right now. Bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Henry Lee Clark was born on September 4, 1936, in Yazoo City, Mississippi. He was the oldest of four children, Charlie Boy, Walter, and Annie, born to the late Osborne and Bernada Clark. He accepted Christ at an early age in Yazoo City, Mississippi, and united with the Church of God in Christ in Eaton, Mississippi. After moving to Chicago, Illinois, he moved his membership to One Way Missionary Baptist Church under the pastorate of Reverend Clifton Marshall, where he met his wife, Kathleen Clark. In 1966, they moved their membership to Friendship Baptist Church under the pastorate of Dr. Shelvin Jerome Hall. In 1967, they were joined in marriage and welcomed a beautiful baby girl, his pride and joy, Clinetta Michelle Clark, in 1969. He attended St. Francis Catholic Elementary School in Yazoo City, Mississippi, and continued his education at Fisk University. He was a hard worker and worked at several boys' group homes throughout his professional career. He was a resolute servant and was always willing to serve in any capacity. He especially loved preparing food for every church event while serving on the hospitality and culinary committee. 
He was enrolled in numerous standard leadership curriculum courses with the Sunday School Publishing Board of the National Baptist Convention, USA Incorporated. He faithfully attended Sunday school and Bible study. He enjoyed sports and attended many Chicago Bulls and Chicago Cubs games. Though he didn't attend any football games, he enjoyed watching the Chicago Bears and Michigan Wolverines games from home, hollering at the television and calling different family members to discuss the games. He departed this life on Monday, March 11, 2024. He was in, preceded in death by both his parents, Osborne, Osborne and Bernada Clark, and siblings, Walter Clark, Annie Thompson, and Mary Alice Bullock. One stepson, Kent Marshall, and his daughter, Clinetta Clark. He leaves to mourn a brother, Charlie Boy, a stepdaughter and stepson, Karen Marshall and Dwayne Marshall, and a host of nieces, nephews, grandchildren, and friends. Come on, let's say amen for the life of Brother Henry Clark. Amen. I got tickled when he said he didn't attend football games, but would holler at the television. Lord have mercy. Thank God for his uh, life. Uh, thank you, Sister Mason and Sister uh, Bernard and Reverend Winfrey for uh, what you've done so far. Uh, at this point, we're going to uh, have a, a church resolution read by Deacon James Lu Lucas. And following that, we'll have reflections. We will allow uh, four or five people two minutes apiece. Uh, and then we'll have uh, family and friends by Brother James Henderson, and then following that, I'd ask uh, Reverend, uh, Reverend Dr. Charles Gordon to come on behalf of the clergy uh, with comments. So we'll have the resolution, and then reflections, and uh, following the reflections, Reverend Gordon, and then we'll come back with the eulogy. Friendship Baptist Church Resolutions. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord, for now on, yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Today, the members of the Friendship Baptist Church of Chicago temporarily say goodbye to our brother in Christ, Henry Clark. We are saddened by his earthly loss, yet rely on God's word. It states in Psalm 49 and 15, but God will redeem my soul from the powers of the grave, for he shall receive me, we as believers in the resurrection, knowledge, the faith, confession of Brother Henry Clark, and take comfort in knowing that he now is at rest from his labor. Brother Clark tenure at Friendship began in October of 1971 under the pastorage of the late Reverend Dr. Shelvin J. Hall and remained under the current pastor, the Reverend Dr. Reginald E. Backers. From the beginning, it was evident that Brother Clark had a love for God word. Not only did he attend Friendship Sunday Church School and the Brotherhood Union, but he also studied at the Baptist General State Congress of Christian Education, as well as the National Baptist Congress of Christian Education. Brother Clark also worked with the Culinary Committee whenever and however he was needed. Before the pandemic, he made coffee on Sunday mornings and punch Sunday afternoons. As stated in 1 Timothy 6 and 11, Brother Clark pursued righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Be it resolved that we bow in honor submission to the will of God as we continue to hold to his unchanging hands, knowing that Brother Clark loved God and supported his church even as his health failed. Be it further resolved that it is our hope that each of you present will place complete faith and trust in God. He knows death brings sorrow, for we know death brings sorrow, yet we know as Christians sorrow is eased by hope. 
For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpets of God. And the dead in Christ shall arise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds who meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. First Thessalonians 4 and 16 and 17 says, To the entire clock family, we know the past few months have been especially difficult. Take comfort in knowing that our loving Heavenly Father never leaves us alone. He has promised to be with us, not only when days are calm and sunny, but when the, there are dark clouds in the sky and everything seems bleak and dreary. Please know that we share your grief and vow to support you with the love of God and earnest prayers. Be it resolved finally that a copy of these resolutions be placed in the permanent records of the church and a copy be given to the family. Done by the order of the Friendship Baptist Church of Chicago this 23rd day of March, 2024 in the year of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Prayerfully submitted the Reverend Dr. Reginald E. Backus, pastor, this is Tony Williams, church clerk. First, give an honor to God, who is the head of my life, to the pastor of this beautiful church, and all the Christian members and friends, and to Reverend, Win I can't never think of his name, Winfrey. Um, didn't know you was a minister now, one of my favorite musicians. Uh, to the family, uh, my name is Deborah, and I'm Pastor Clifton Marshall's daughter. Um, and Kathleen is my sister-in-law my ex-sister-in-law, this is my family. And um, on behalf of the Marshall family and on behalf of One Way Missionary Baptist Church, we do not have a resolution, unfortunately, because our pastor, Pastor Willie Marshall, is handicapped, and we're working on that. But Clark was a nice person. I liked him. I've been knowing him for years, years, years in this family and he was very supportive in everything. Uh, our family do a lot of things, barbecues, all dinner parties, and he was always a very nice and very concerned person. Um, he hold conversations, like you said, about the football games and things like that with my dad and my family. And he was a very nice, outgoing type person. I'm gonna miss him a lot. And I just wanted to tell the family, Karen and all of you all, look to the hills from which cometh your help, because all of your help cometh from God. Thank you. Good morning, pastor, friendship, family, members, uh, to uh, Ms. Clatherine Clark and the family. Uh, we have our most sincere dedication, to, commitment to his uh, being a, a real personal friend of mine. Uh, we're going to miss him. I am. We're going to miss him very much. I had a couple of things that I, excuse me, I had wanted to say about Brother Clark. First of all, he was, 
He was committed and he was dedicated to friendship and to the church. I remember Brother Clark, that was, in my opinion, he, he, was, he, was, a, he was the master of the kitchen. He, he, he fixed that coffee and he, he did everything he could to, to serve as a good steward for the, for the church. And uh, I have, I'm sorry, it's kind of it's hard for me. I mean, we go way back and I used to pick him up, bring him to church and uh, I had one conversation that we had, and we never really had any problems except this one time. He would always slam my car door when he got out. And I'd say, Brother Clark, you don't, have to, you don't have to slam the door. You can, you know, don't, don't slam it so hard because, you know, this is a newer, the older car, you, got, you had to put, hit them hard to close them. But my car, these new car, they, you don't have to do that. He said, okay, Brother Bang. He'd get out of the car, wham, he slammed that door. I said, bro, Clyde, okay, okay. Every time I picked him up and he got out of that car, wham, he slammed that door. I said, bro, Clyde, now we're gonna have to get, we have, we're gonna have a problem if you keep slamming that car door. He said, okay, bro, bang, get out of the car, wham, slam that car door. So that was one thing about it. He, he, he was a little hard headed about that, about my car door. But what I wanna say, he's, he's, he will be missed. And to the family, like I said, we're going to miss, and miss him. And to uh, Sister Clark and the whole family, if there's anything that I can do or we can do, just call me. Thank you. To the pastor and uh, to the uh, family uh, clock, Henry Clark. Uh, just like Deacon Banks, that you got to saying that uh, uh, Bink, uh, Deacon Banks was taking Clark, uh, you know, picking him up and everything. So Clark had seen me one day and he had said, uh, "You come my way, don't you?" I said, "Yes, I do," because uh, Banks had to get here early. So I said, "Sure, Clark. I passed right by you. I was picking a gold thing too." And so I picked up Clark and he would be he would be right on the corner there. And I used to say, you don't want me to come all the way? He said, no, just, just come to the corner. So one time I was uh, in the shower and, uh, get, and get in the shower and my wife called me and said, the phone. So Clark said, you late. <laughs> I said, Clark, I, I say, I'm, I, I'm not really late. I think you a little early. He said, I'm out here and, and, you know, and, you, and you ain't made it yet. He was kind of bossy, you know, I kept my cool. I said, okay, Clark, I'll I be there a little while, just, just hold on, you know, and so he would say that, you know, so I would pick him up and everything. He said, what happened? I said, nothing really, Clark, we, 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 we almost on time, we only, you know, five minutes. It was funny to me, because I'm driving, he telling me I'm late, and I'm picking him up, you know, but, he, but, but it was, you know, I didn't get mad or nothing, you know, and, 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 and uh, getting back to uh, Deacon Banks, uh, the door, you know, he would get out, he would slam my door too, and, uh, and I think it was just a habit that he could not help. You know, I said, Clark, not so, not so hard. Then he said, okay, but he'd do it again. So I got to the point, I started driving the old car. <laughs> I said, if he gonna slam it, I want him to slam on the old car, you know. So he told me one day, he said, why are you driving this one? I wouldn't tell him why I was driving that, you know. I just said, well, I just want to switch up. But he was hard on those doors for some reason, but I'm gonna miss Clark, cause me and Elvin used to go to his house. Elvin used to cut his hair. And anything Clark called and he said he needed, he needed uh, me, Elvin, and Banks, we would take it to him, you know. You know, and we didn't ask so why he needed it or what, but anything he needed, you know, we did it for him. But I'm going to really miss him, but the Lord knows the best. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm a neighbor of Clark's um, on, Lala, on a Lala block. Um, I think it's a lot of people from Lala that's here. If you're here, can you please stand? Thank 
I met um I met Clark years ago, living in one of Miss Neal buildings. And um and he used to always sit like on the side of the building in a chair. And uh, like almost every day, especially when it was sunny outside, sit downstairs, talk to him. And I always talk stuff to him. Always. And he always talks stuff back. Um and I can't even say some of the stuff we used to say to each other. But but like he used to always get on me and I'll be like, Clark, you ever saw a pit bull fight a chihuahua? He no. I say me neither, but I know it ain't pretty. And and he always used to think he was the pit bull bull and I was the chihuahua. I'll be like, Clark, I will run sir. I'm like, I'll run circles around you, man. But he was like a great uncle to me. Like, seriously, um, I lost my grandma and granddad, and I just looked at him as one of those people who I could talk to about something that happened in the past or just any type of advice because, of course, he he lived and, and he had that wisdom. So um, when he moved, me and Diana here went, paid him a visit. I'm like, Clark, stay around here. Let's go see him right quick. Um, last year in the summertime, we had went to go see him, and um, – Diana used to always cook. She always used to be like, take some of this down to Miss Clark, Mr. Clark. And, um, or he'll see me like, what y'all cooking today? So always made sure he had something to eat, something to drink or whatever the case may be. And definitely going to miss him because for them last five years, like always mess with him, always talk to him, always help him with something if he needed. And definitely going to be missed. That's why I wanted to come show my love and support today. Rest in peace, Clark. Hey, now, how everybody doing today? All right. Praise the Lord. Mercy. Uh, I want to say this about Mr. Clark. I'm not saying this because he li he's gone today, but Mr. Clark was a good man. I'm going to tell you why. I, uh, I used to live over there. I moved, but I used to live over there. I lived there about eight years. Anyway, make a long story short. I went to work one morning. I had two cars, and I didn't know they was working on the street. So... I get home, I didn't see my car, my second car, I didn't see it. I said, what's up? So Mr. Clark came out, he said, uh, they tried, they was going to tow your car, and I stopped him. He didn't have to do that, but he, he said, I stopped him. I told the man, I said, that's a good man, that man at work. He didn't know y'all was uh, doing the streets, you know. And so the man, he, the man looked at Clark, he said, well, I tell you what, we said, well, we're going to have to move it. You know, we're just putting on the next plot, which they did. And I appreciate that today, Mr. Clark. Mr. Clark is a good man, you know? And I'm gonna miss him dearly, because every time I had to see him on the bus stop, I would pick him up. I didn't charge him, I would pick him up and take him where he wanted to go, you know? That was a good man, and uh, he gonna be very missed. So I'm, I'm gonna let, I know y'all, I mean, he says, I know I don't wanna hold everybody up. Or, but anyway, make a long story short, I love you, Mr. Clark, and I'm gonna miss you. Certainly we give praises to the Almighty God, who is good all the time and all the time good. Honor and respect to this great pastor, Pastor Reginald Backus, and to each of you, and of course to this beloved family. And we're here to let you know that God loves you. Always, never made a mistake, can't make a mistake. This world is not our home. Blessed are the dead who died in the Lord. They rest from their labor. He's in a good place. Amen. He's in glory. 
and he wouldn't come back if he could. But he would say to you, make sure you come where I am. Amen. He is happy. Happy. You can just imagine. So let us be encouraged. We, we're human. And we do feel a sadness. We do feel a sorrow. We do feel a void when a loved one leaves. A person come visit us from out of town. We can feel sad when they leave. Amen. But the good news is it ain't the end. We will see him again. Amen. And on that day, there will be no more separation, no more disappointment, no more heartaches and pain. But in the meantime, wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he will strengthen your heart. May God bless you and keep you in his loving care. Amen. Let us pray, God, how we thank and praise you today for, uh, for life. Thank you for friendship that has been developed with Brother Henry Clark down through the years. Thank you for his family that's gathered here today and friends and loved ones. And Lord, we just thank you for allowing him to pass our way, to touch our lives. Um, we're saddened today that you've made the decision to call your servant from labor to reward. But Lord, we have to remember you created us. You made us. We belong to you. And you alone have the right to call us back to yourself. And so we pause to thank you for the life he lived, for what he meant while he lived. And I pray that the memory of what he meant while he lived will continue to live within us. And so while he may be gone physically, uh, his memory can continue to live on in our spirits. Thank you for all who have participated in this service today. Um, thank you for those who've had to travel great distances. You've given traveling grace. And we ask even now, God, that you will grant traveling grace upon their return. But then, God, we pray that uh, Brother Henry Clark's living will not be in vain that it will be a stark reminder to each and every one of us that no matter how vibrant we are today, one day we too will have to pass this way. And so help us, dear God, to uh, live lives that are uh, lives lived in preparation for when you choose to call us from labor to reward. Bless now as we come to share a few moments from your word. We pray that you'll speak to our hearts, speak to our spirits, and most of all, help each one of us to know that to be absent from the body, according to scripture, means to be present with the Lord. And so we weep not today as those who have no hope. Uh, Brother Henry Clark had professed hope in Jesus Christ, and not only professed it, but he lived it out. And so, Lord, we stand on your word and stand on your promises that even now his spirit is in your presence. So be with us and give us the comfort that only you can give. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank each one of you for your um, participation today, certainly to Miss Kathleen and to Karen and to the rest of the family. Uh, we are grateful. Uh, for the uh, privilege and opportunity to share uh, in this uh, homegoing uh, celebration. Uh, Brother Clark was a fighter. I'll talk about that a little bit more uh, later, but y'all do know he was written off uh, several years ago. Uh, the doctors had pretty much done all that they could do, uh, and I remember uh, going to the hospital, visiting with him, and then when he was released, he made his way back to church uh, and he would always remind me, Pastor, the doctors thought it was over, but obviously God saw something different. Amen. Uh, he had been fighting with cancer and, uh, and dealing with some personal and some physical issues, uh, but God had uh, kept him, uh, and he was, uh, he was always grateful uh, for that. I'm not going to be before you long. We are uh, 
I've been reminded we have to be within the gates of the cemetery by one o'clock, and so we want to make sure that we uh, do that. Um, I just want to look for a couple of minutes at the 12th verse of the 90th number of Psalm. Psalm number 90, verse number 12. And this is a prayer of Moses that is written in the psalm. And verse number 12 says, So teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Uh, and I calculated it. Uh, it looked like Clark lived 87 years. Amen. And certainly he, he had enough time to gain some wisdom. Uh, but the psalmist said, Teach us to number our days that we may gain a heart of wisdom. And I, if I had to tag that text, I would just simply ask the question, what's your expiration date? What's your expiration date? Uh, thank you, ushers. Brothers and sisters, whether we've ever considered it or not, every one of us that are still alive, that are still breathing and still moving, uh, all of us have an expiration date on our lives. We don't know when cannot know for certain how we're going to leave here. We can't even know with certainty where we might be. But at some point, according to God's will and God's time, every one of us has an expiration date. If you think about it, many of the products that we buy uh, and that are in our households have expiration dates stamped on them. Uh, anyone who's ever consumed a glass of milk long after the expiration date on the container knows that the expiration date is important. Amen. Anybody beside me ever tasted spoiled milk? It's not a good thing. If you've ever tried to eat cereal that's been in your pantry for too long, you know that it's best to pay attention to the expiration date on the box because cereal can get stale for sitting too long. Uh, I didn't pay much attention growing up because I didn't have to buy it. Uh, and now that I have to pay for it, I watch the label because the label says like this, best if used by, and then it has a date, amen. Uh, those of us that have to take medications, uh, uh, those medications that we have to buy, uh, they have used by dates on just about every one of our medications. But have you ever stopped to consider that in life, every one of us has an expiration date? The challenge is that you, nor I, nor the doctor, nor your spouse, nor the preacher has any idea what that expiration date is. It cannot be read in a crystal ball. No palm reader can read your palm and tell you when you're going to leave here. It is an unknown mystery that lies in the hands of an eternal God. Uh, there's a date that represents the time in history when you and I entered this world and that day is labeled as our birthday. There's another date, though, an important date, a date that will complete every one, of, uh, every one of our tombstones, and that will be our last day on this earth. It will be the day when we transition from this life in preparation for the next. Uh, and I don't have this in my uh, sermon, my little notes here, but I, I do need to say for those that have not yet trusted in Jesus Christ, there will be a transition from this life to the next life. Amen. Uh, and in the next life, there's only two options. Amen. You're either going up or going down. Amen. Uh, but the choice is up to you. We don't know what our expiration day is. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. It could be 10 years from now or with all of this stuff that they have on the market now to help extend our lives, you might make it another 50 or 60 years. I don't know my expiration date, and you don't know yours, but one thing we should all remember and know for sure, that day is on its way. Amen. And as we gather here today to celebrate the life of Henry Clark, it is a testament and testimony that each one of us will have an ending date to our lives. And let me say one more thing before I move on. The only person in control of that date is our maker and sustainer and creator, which is God, our Father. And the fact of the matter is, and I said it a few minutes ago, a whole lot of people wrote Henry Clark off a long time ago. 
Uh, at least 10, 12 years ago, the doctors thought he was done. He struggled through a terrible bout with cancer, but he had faith in his God and had faith in the power of the prayers of his church family. And somebody beside me knows that God miraculously delivered him and gave him an extension that even the doctors could not explain. So understand, family, that each one of us has a date that we're born into the world and a date that God chooses in his divine providence to call us from labor to reward. And I need to serve notice for each one of us that what we should consider and what is important uh, in the time that God gives us is what occurs in the dash between your birthday and your ending day. Amen. Uh, Brother Clark has lived out his expiration date. And as a matter of fact, with the help of God and according to man, I believe he cheated his expiration date. Amen. God in his divine providence gave him a few more years. Brother Clark is a reminder that our birthday is the beginning and our expiration date signals the end. And for those of us that are still here while we have time, I think Brother Clark would tell us to make sure that you put something meaningful in the dash. Yeah, Brother Clark was faithful in his own way. Uh, he was faithful to this church. I could always uh, count on now, Just a few Sundays ago, he, he switched up on me. Amen. He always sat right over there where Reverend Hardiman is sitting. That was his spot. Uh, but for some reason, uh, Clark was over on this side. Y'all remember that? Yeah. I don't know what got into him. I thought, well, I better leave that alone. Maybe, maybe somebody was over there he wanted to sit near. I don't know what was going on, but he... He was faithful and could always count on him sitting over there uh, in that corner. Before the pandemic, Brother Clark was always at noon Bible study on a consistent basis. He attended Sunday school regularly. He worked tirelessly with the, uh, with the kitchen committee when we had our second Saturday meals. And when we have, whenever we had a fellowship dinner or a repast following a funeral, you could always count on Brother Clark having on his apron and being in that kitchen. Amen. Uh, Brother Clark also would make coffee on Sunday morning. Uh, when we were making coffee and bringing donuts, uh, Deacon Ricketts would bring donuts by here. Brother Clark would make the coffee be before Sunday school. And the only disagreement I ever had with Clark came over that coffee he would make on Sunday morning. Amen. Uh, first of all, I told him a couple times that coffee was too strong. Uh, I told him it tasted worse than penitentiary coffee, amen. Uh, but y'all know he had a smart mouth. He just responded, Re -re -re all they, they got to do is add some water, sugar, and cream, amen. And so I, I finally, after a while, I, I just left him alone. Uh, the other thing Clark and I disagreed about was that he would make the coffee, uh, and then when it was time to go to class, he would uh, take the coffee pot, and leave the grounds and any coffee left in the coffee pot until Wednesday morning before Bible study. I couldn't stand that. I, I just went after Clark time and time again. Man, why don't you just clean out the coffee pot? And he would tell me, it'll be there Wednesday when I get here. And I finally figured out that maybe it wasn't worth fighting about. So I left him alone. Solomon, the proverbial writer, said there's a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Time to be born and a time to die. So if it's true that everyone has an expiration date and equally true that we do not know when that date is, how should those of us that are left behind approach the remaining time that God is giving us? I believe today uh, when we preach uh, funerals, we need to talk about the ones, but, but really they preach their own funeral. But some of us that are left behind need to be reminded. And I believe Moses gives us a word of wisdom when he says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. Uh, Moses in this passage rightly describes the human race and lets us know that even in our strength, we're still finite 
and fickle in the eyes of God. So he asked the Lord to teach us that our days are numbered. Brother Clark has lived out his days, and the question is, what will you and I do with the days that we have left? Each one of us ought to be reminded every time we attend a funeral service like this that we do not know when our day is, but we should be reminded that our day is definitely on the way. And since we know that our days are numbered, it should cause us to consider what we will be remembered for. Thank God that we can remember that Clark served faithfully here at the church. He was known for keeping up with certain members in his circle at the church. Uh, Henry Clark was one who often let me know when certain people were sick or in the hospital. He had a phone ministry, amen, and he had a ministry of care and connection with those that were in his circle. And I ask again, what are you going to do with the days that you have left? Don't leave here and all anyone can remember or has to say about you is everything negative. Amen. When we leave here, the only thing we can leave other than a few assets, if we have any, is memories. Amen. I'm going to say that one more time. Every one of us, when we leave here, hopefully we'll have something to leave for those that are behind. But uh, other than a few assets, the only thing that we can really leave is memories in the minds of those that we've come in contact with. What will people remember about you? What will people have to say if they're called on to speak at your funeral? Lord, help me today. Will it be that every time they saw you, you had something negative to say? Will it be that they always saw the cup as half empty instead of half full? That people always suspect of people's motives, always gossiping about business they didn't know anything about. Listen, as believers, we ought to be a people of joy, of love, and of peace. And that's the memory, like Brother Clark, that's the memory that we should leave behind. Now, I'm not trying to make Henry Clark an angel, because if you knew him, you know he wasn't no angel. Amen. Uh, he was a little gruff at times, and I laughed when that brother said, yeah, he thought he could whoop anybody. Amen. Gruff at times. But one thing I do know is that he was grateful to God for keeping him, and he was not ashamed to tell anybody that it was God that had delivered him. He was willing to serve others even when he wasn't at his best physically. I remember him limping along, but listen, he was willing to give God the best he had even when he wasn't physically able. And so Moses reminds us today that each one of us uh, need the Lord to teach us to, to number our days. Not only should we consciously number our days because of what we will be remembered for, but we should also number our days because one day we're going to have to give an account to God. Every one of us will have to stand before the judgment seat of God. Now here's the good news. For believers, we'll have to give an accounting for what we've done since God saved us. Because for the believer, your sins have already been paid for because Jesus uh, uh, paid the price for our sins on Calvary, so God won't judge believers for sin, but God will have us give an accounting for what we did after he saved us. Amen. Unbelievers will have to give an accounting for everything in their life, but God will want to know what believers did to advance the kingdom once they were saved. I'm done. I'm in my seat. We should number our days because we'll be remembered for what we did while we lived. Memories will be based on how we live. We should number our days because one day we will all have to give an accounting to God for what we did while we lived. And finally, I'm in my seat. We should number our days, Moses says, so that we might gain a heart of wisdom. And wisdom, as I often say, is being able to see life from God's point of view. And for Moses to ask the Lord to teach us means that there is something mysterious about life that we might need to know. And I think the major thing we need to know is where our dwelling place lies. 
And listen to what God, uh, Moses says to God in Psalms, uh, Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains, before creation, before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Amen. And all of us need to know that our dwelling place lies in the hands of Almighty God. Then verse 10 and 11 Moses reminds us right before he gets to 12 and verse 12 and tells us the number of our days. Listen to this. He said, the days of our lives are 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Hallelujah. God gave Clark seven bonus years. Amen. Days of our lives, 70 years. And if by reason of strength, they are 80 years. Yet their boast is only labor and sorrow, for it's soon cut off, and we fly away. Amen. How many of us remember when we were in our 20s and 30s? Some of us don't want to remember that, but when we were in our 20s and 30s, when young and vibrant, and jump up in the morning and go on about your day, didn't, uh, didn't, didn't, didn't have no pains, Keep on living. The days of our lives are 70 years, and by reason of strength they are 80, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. Keep on turning that calendar. Keep on celebrating New Year's. I remind us you are hurt in places that you didn't even know existed. And when you used to get up early in the morning and jump up out of the bed, now you have to push your way out. Amen. And all I'm trying to say is we don't have forever to live on this earth. The days of our lives, 70 years, if by reason of strength they are 80 years, yet their boast is only labor and sorrow. Who knows the power of your anger, for as the fear of you, so is your wrath. We're not going to live forever, and Brother Clark taught us that today. Then Moses closes, and I close with verse number 12. Teach us, Lord, to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God, for the life of Henry Clark, and thank you for uh, allowing him to dwell among us. He has reached his expiration date. For those of us that remain, those of us that you've left behind, let us be mindful that one day we too will have to pass this way. So like Brother Clark, let us live lives that are meaningful and impactful, lives that touch others and lives that bless others and lives that demonstrate our faith and our trust in you. Lord, we love you today and once again, we thank you for his life. Thank you for the memories that we will have even though physically he has left us. And even now we say a temporary goodbye. But we know for those that have placed their hope and trust in you, we'll see our brother again. And so, Lord, we don't say farewell. We just say we'll see you in the morning. As a songwriter says, some glad morning. When this life is over, I'll fly away. Going to a land where joy will never end. We all shall fly away. Bless this family now, God, as only you can. Comfort and keep them in their times of sadness. When tears are flowing, we know that you're the only one that can dry tear-stained eyes. Comfort us in a midnight hour. We ask you to go with us now as we travel to the place of internment. 
give us safe travels. And Lord, we'll always be careful to give your name the glory, give you the honor, and give you the praise. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the life of Brother Henry Clark. We're going to ask our directors to come. The clergy will procession out, followed by the body and then the family. The place of interment will be at the Concordia Cemetery, 7900 West Madison Street in Forest Park, Illinois. You all have stickers for us? Okay, you can see one of the directors when we make it outside. And um, they will give us stickers and we can line up and prepare. Which direction go down, Jackson? Okay, we'll go west on Jackson and we'll follow the procession from there. If everyone can stand other than the family, other than the family, and once the body goes past, the family can follow the body out. We need three flower, three persons to help us with flowers. Get to heaven. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see. 